Hello and welcome to Tenor Banjo from Scratch, Lesson 5. Quick recap. So what we've done so far is we've learned a few chord shapes. We then found those shapes up and down the neck and we identified three different forms, form 1, 3 and 5, which were named after the note on our first string, whether it was the first note of the scale, the third note of the scale or the fifth note of the scale. And we did the same for three minor chords as well, finding those three forms, which left us with lots of opportunities to play all over the neck. In this lesson, we're going to learn to play the chords to the song, Oh When the Saints Go Marching In. And we're going to do it in three different positions on the neck, using those different forms that we've learned. While we're doing it, we're also going to learn a new way of making a seventh chord based on those shapes. So to begin with, let's do Oh When the Saints Go Marching In using the first shapes we learned as a little bit of a recap. We're going to play our open C chord, open, open, two, three. Our F chord just moves those first two fingers across so they're on the middle two strings, the inside two strings. But we're going to add a note. We talked about it before, it's an optional one. That is an F chord. But we can add our ring finger at the third fret of the first string to give us open two, three, three, which is also an F chord, but that one is probably gonna be a bit more useful when we start moving around the neck. So let's stick with that one for now. Open two, three, three. And our G7 chord is two, open, three, two. So our first two fingers on the second fret of the two outside strings, and our ring finger, second string up, third fret. I'm going to put a chart on the screen so you can play along with me and rhythm wise keep it very simple four down strokes to the bar but try and make your first and third stroke a little bit smaller just aim for maybe your bottom string or two strings and the second and fourth strum a whole big chord strum so we get a bit of variation in the rhythm like this little big little big okay ready here we go. One, two, three, four. G7. C. C7. C. Now don't forget that C7, we have had it before, we took our C and we lowered this top note here down by two frets and we're going to look at how we can use that same technique to make some different forms into seventh chords in a moment. Now that's really good, we've got a song and we've played it all using those chord forms that were in the same area of the neck. And that's a good thing to do, especially when you're playing back up. Because if I played those using a variety of those ones that we learned, those forms, I might have gone C to a G7 here. Now that's a bit of a leap. That doesn't sound as musical. And if there's no good reason for us going up there at that point, then we're probably better off staying in the same area of the fretboard. It'll sound smoother, more musical, and it won't surprise any other members of the band when suddenly one of our chords leaps right up in the air. Now let's have a look at another position on the fingerboard, and we'll find all of those chords all in the same area of the neck. So our C is going to be the form three that we learned before because it has that note on the top, the third of the chord, the E note. The G7 that we're going to use, there's a diagram for you there. You might think, where on earth did we get that from? Well, if you were to play an F chord, and like we did in previous weeks, move it up to the second fret, so I'm playing two, four, five, five, and actually what we need to do is we need to find 
the note that the chord is named after and lower it by two frets. So in this shape, the root note of this chord is on the second string. Because if we've moved up F two frets, we're now playing a G chord, we need to find a G. Well, we've got a G right here on the second string. So we need to now move our little finger off that string and just hold down the first string. And then this spare finger, our second finger, can go onto the second string at the third fret. And that's going to turn that G into a G7. So that's where we've got that G7 form from. So we've got this C chord, form three, because the third of the chord is on the top. Then this G7, and this G7 here is a form five, because the fifth of the chord is on top. That one is the one that started life like an F, and so that top note was optional. And this is why I suggested at the beginning of this one, we think about keeping that finger down, because that gives us the fifth of the chord. So when we move it up, we can easily pop our little finger over those two strings and make that a form five. And now it's a seventh chord, but it's still a form five because the fifth is on the top. That's our G7 chord. We need to find an F chord. If we take our C chord form, uh, form with the one on the top, the root on the top, and we bar and move that up, we'll get C sharp or D flat, D, D sharp or E flat, E, there's no sharp or flat between E and F, so the next one at the fifth fret bar is an F, and that's an F form one, because right on the top, we have an F note. So let's use that one. It's just one fret above our C form. So now we have our C, our G7 is down here. Here's our C again. Here's our F. All we need now is a C7. Now this one can be a bit tricky, but I'll show you a way to make it simpler. First of all, find your C chord. Like we did when we were working out the G7, we've got to figure out the note in here that we've got to lower by two frets, and it's the one that the chord's named after. So we've got to find a C in there. And there's a C note right here on the fifth fret of the third string. Same as our open C string, an octave higher. Now, this is gonna be a tricky one to lower because we've got to keep this note here, we've got to keep that note, we've got to keep one of the notes that our second finger is holding, and we end up with something a bit horrible, which is four, three, five, seven. Now, it's perfectly doable, but it's quite a stretch. It's gonna depend on the scale length of your banjo as to whether that's easy to reach or not. If you've got a slightly longer scale tenor banjo, like a 19th fret, that might be a bit of a nasty stretch, whereas my 17th fret is not too bad. But we can make it a little bit easier by taking this little finger note here and replacing it with a note at the third fret. So we would take off our little finger and bar the third fret. Okay, let's try playing Oh When The Saints Go Marching In with those chord voicings. Here we go. One, two, three, four. There's your G7. Back to your C. Make it into a C7. F. And C. G7 and C. It's a little bit trickier, but as you can see, we've stayed in the same area of the neck again, so our chord changes sound nice and smooth from one to the other. Finally, let's try the next set of positions up. We're going right up the neck now to the seventh fret. We're going to start with the seventh fret bar, but the first thing to notice about this is it's exactly the same 
as our F chord down here that we had right at the beginning. And this is where I suggested you keep that ring finger on because if you take that shape and you move it up the neck to bar at the seventh, then your other two fingers will be at the ninth and your little finger at the tenth over two strings. That now becomes a C chord. And that is our C form five because it has the fifth of the chord on the top, a G. We're then going to go to a G7, and for the G7 we can stay barring the seventh, and we can put our two fingers down here at the eighth fret on the first string and the ninth fret on the second string, and this looks exactly like the open C7 we had down there, just moved up to the seventh fret. So that's quite a nice easy change from C, to G7. Let's find our F and then we'll deal with that C7. For the F we're going to use the same form that we used for our C chord the last time round, our form 3 because it has the E on the top, 4, 5, 5, 7, and if we slide that one all the way up the neck until we get to the ninth fret with our index finger, then the 10th fret and that second finger is holding two strings down and our little finger right up here on the 12th fret playing the octave. There we go, we've got our nice F chord that's near to the other two. So a little recap, we have our C chord, our G7 chord and our, and our F chord. All we need to do now is learn how to turn C into C7. And guess what? It's exactly how we made our G7 down at the second fret earlier on. We took the second string and we lowered it by two frets to give us that shape. And if we take that one up the neck to the seventh fret with our index finger, we've got our C7. And the only thing we have to do to change between them is our little finger was covering two strings and this finger wasn't doing anything. We can actually put that one down first and then slide our little finger off to give us the C7 shape. And already you should see how, as we move around, a shape we used for one chord in one position ends up being reused further up the neck to be a different chord in a different place in it, but we're recycling the shapes. Let's have a go at playing Oh When The Saints with these shapes. Here we go. One, two, three, four. So as you can see, we're able to use these different chord forms to play in different areas of the neck. And at different times, you might want to move to different areas of the neck to add some variety in a tune. Or you might want to play in a particular position because it gives you certain chord voicings that you like the sound of. Or, as you might have noticed then, on the second time round and the third time round, none of my shapes had open strings in them. Whereas the first time round had these big ringing chords. Now, if you want a big ringing chord sound, open chords are great. But it can get in the way a little bit if you're playing with other musicians and you want something that rather than a big wash of sound, you've got a nice punchy rhythm. So that's where the closed chord shapes, the ones with no open strings, of our second time round and our third time round really come into their own because with them you can do this. What am I doing? Well, I'm resting my fingers on the strings exactly where they're going to be, but I'm not pressing them down onto the frets. So the shape is formed, my fingers are touching the strings, no sound comes out because I haven't pressed them down far enough to touch the frets. And what I can do is I can kind of pulse my left hand. It's not really a hard squeeze and let go, it's more of a twitch of my thumb. 
But what I'm doing is, in time with my right hand, I'm pressing down and immediately letting go again, like this. So the little twitch of my left hand comes at exactly the same time as I hit the strings. And then, as soon as they've rung, I've taken the pressure off and the strings are dead again. Really good for swing jazz rhythm because you can get a really punchy sound without drowning out everyone else. And after all, we are part of the rhythm section, so we do need to be thinking about creating a rhythm for everybody else to play over. Practice those three different ways of doing it, and while you're playing, it's always good to say the chord name out loud, because that will help that position on the fingerboard stick in your mind. And don't forget, all we've done here is play in the key of C. We've moved up and down the net, but we haven't changed key. We're still playing C's, C7's, F's, and G7's. If you play these and you're getting really confident with them, then before the next lesson, what you could try and do is take some of these and slide them to a different position on the neck. And you'll be playing in a different key. And that way, you'll be able to reuse things that you know, like this shape to this shape to this shape, but in a different position, you'll be playing in a different key. I'll give you one in a moment to practice. But it's a good idea when you do this to try and figure out for yourself what those three chords are going to be. It'll really help with your fingerboard awareness. Let's take that last one that was up here at the seventh fret, and it had our C there, our G7 here, and back to a C again, and then we had our F chord up at the ninth fret. Let's take that whole pattern, everything about it, and lower it down by two frets. Now, even without thinking about the chord names, we could still play that song. to say what any of those chord names were, didn't have to tell you, I didn't really have to think about it myself. All I had to do was play that pattern in a different place on the neck. So that's quite powerful knowledge. But let's work out what those chords would actually be, two frets lower than a C. That first one would be a B flat. Instead of a G7, we'd have one two steps lower than that, an F7. And then back to our B flat, which would obviously turn into a B flat seven because C to C seven, the note name doesn't change. And then instead of an F, we'll have two frets lower than an F, which will be an E flat. And then B flat, F seven, B flat. B flat's quite a common key in jazz, so that's very handy to be able to play it in that key. Lots of practice in this one. I hope you've enjoyed it, and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.